today on Fixing the Money Thing. How do you know that's God that opened the door? Or how do you know that it's God that closed the door? My theory is this. If it's in the Word of God and the door is closed, knock it down. It's painful to step out in a dream when it's just fuzziness and nothingness. But you've got to pass the dream test. From the recent Pro Vision Conference at Faith Life Church, Gary Cassi teaches us that God wants to give us provision to create, build, and innovate if we'll just let Him. With most families burdened in unsustainable levels of personal debt, most Americans believe there is no way to have financial freedom. However, author, pastor, and financial expert Gary Cassie believes most families can be completely out of debt in less than seven years. You must get out of debt. You've got to make right choices with your money right now. Gary and his wife Drenda are now on a crusade to share this information that changed their life so that you can not just survive, but prosper in today's economy. Your life can be totally transformed by an idea in the marketplace. This is Gary Cassie, Fixing the Money Thing. Welcome to Fixing the Money Thing. We're Gary and Drinda Cassie, and we're going to talk today about your money. That's right. You know, a lot of people are looking for the big breakthrough. They're waiting for something to happen. God's just going to hit me over the head with this prosperity or blessing or do something That's to right. change my circumstance. Gary, you did a great job at the Provision Conference yes. sharing how <laughs> the big breakthrough comes. There are big breakthroughs, but you got to be ready for it, right? Speaking of breakthroughs, Drinda, we need to deal with some perceptions people have about how money actually flows in the earth mm -hmm. realm. We get emails all the time. Why don't you read that one yes. that we got just the yes. other day? Yes, here's uh, Alan, and Alan is uh, saying, he's from Australia, saying, thank you so much for your teaching, as it really sheds light on kingdom principles of finances. I have not fully understood in the past how this worked. I have listened to financial teachers. However, what you're saying is imparting faith so I can believe yeah. and understand how to operate God's kingdom principles on a permanent basis and not by accident. Thanks for your teaching, Gary. Excellent. Well, we're talking today from the Provision Conference, our 2012 conference, where we dealt into the principles that answered Alan's questions. Mm -hmm. It's gonna help you understand how to walk this out and actually partake and embrace the freedom you're looking for. And we'll talk to you at the end in just a minute after this segment. But let's go now to the Provision Conference for this year's event. And so tonight I want to talk to you about your big breakthrough. That's your time to say, yeah, I like that idea. <laughs> big breakthrough. Everyone wants a breakthrough, right? I mean, if you don't believe me, you should have been in Ohio, uh, what, a couple weeks ago when they had the Powerball at about 700 million. Everyone wants a breakthrough. I don't know how much they sold, but, uh, you know, it was millions of dollars worth of tickets because everyone's looking for a breakthrough. They're tired of their, their normal, average, and ordinary, mediocre lives. Everyone needs a breakthrough. But uh, in our politically intense culture that has designed our mindsets recently to think of breakthroughs that come through our entitlement programs or the lottery, God has a better system than that. Because the lottery, you have a, at that drawing, you had 100, 176 million to one chance of winning that, that, that money. But in God's kingdom, you have 100% chance of having what he said is yours. So I want to talk about your breakthrough. Everyone's looking for the big breakthrough as if it's something that happens to them. Like it's something that happens to them. But I'm going to mess with your mind tonight because it's not something that happens to you. It's what you break through. A breakthrough does not come to you and surprises you. A breakthrough is something that you break through. Well, we need our people to understand how to break through. How many have heard this cliche? Uh, let me see if I can remember it right so I can quote it correctly. Well, you know, if God closes the door or God opens the door, you know, you ever said, well, God opened this door for me to walk through. God opened this opportunity or God closed the door to that. How many have heard people talk like that? Who knows who's on the other side of the door? How do you know that it's God that opened the door? Or how do you know that it's, it's God that closed the door? My theory is this. If it's in the word of God and the door is closed, knock it down. Come on. <laughs> I'm not going to let circumstances dictate what I have. I'm going to have what the Bible says. 
But we need people who understand how to break through, how to take a stand of faith, how to walk through, break through that lack of discipline, break through that lack of knowledge, break through, the, break through that lack of integrity, break through the selfishness, break through the desire to quit. Yes. We've got to learn how to break through. God is waiting and looking for someone who has the courage to break through. He's already here. He's already equipped you. He's already on the scene. We don't need to have about 24 hours of fasting. He's already here. He's already told you he's not going to leave you or forsake you. He just needs you to say, show me where Goliath is at, bud. We'll take care of it. We're going to break through this thing. We're going to get the job done. There's no such thing as a big breakthrough. I don't mean to disappoint you and you leave all discouraged. If you came waiting for your big breakthrough, there's no such thing. Success happens one small decision at a time. Success never surprised the person who's successful. They can remember all of those small decisions that postured them with the ability to capture a moment in time. Now, when we see that moment in time happen, we say, oh my goodness, instant success, God's hero on the scene, God's power. What you don't see is God's power has been working with that person for a long time. And that person by saying, yes, 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 oh, that hurts, but yes, oh, that hurts, but yes, yes, Lord, oh, I hate, I'll do that, Lord, yes. And finally, they come out of that cave, if you will, and they're revealed, but that's not when God first saw them. The Bible says, you were known in your mother's womb. God had a dream for you before you were born. He had a breakthrough for you before you were born. Not that the breakthrough we're taught in church about having a breakthrough. We're talking about he gave you an assignment, a purpose for you. He needed you to be here on the earth at this time to break through something. There's someone out there waiting for you to break through. There's someone out there waiting for you to be their hero. And that anointing you carry, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, that anointing is not for you just to feel good. It's for you to do something with. And there's a world out there that needs to see relevant Christianity. God is waiting on your breakthrough tonight. You're not waiting on his. Oh, that's, that just kind of tilts, doesn't it? Pinball machine tilts. It's like, huh? God's waiting on your breakthrough tonight. You're not waiting on his. His happened 2,000 years ago on the cross. He gave you the entire kingdom. He gave you the mind of Christ. He gave you everything you have need of in life. He gave you every bit of equipment, every spiritual warfare tool, every bit of wisdom and knowledge to become more than an overcomer. There is no excuse. But God's system is not instant. We live in a culture that thinks it's supposed to be instant. It's not fair I don't have success. Let's take money from the wealthy and give it to the poor. Let's, let's dumb down the whole culture. Let's, let's all just have fun and succeed. How many found out it doesn't work that way? It doesn't work that way. God's system is not instant. Our culture wants it instant. It's not how God's system operates. True success is not instant. Here's the phrase that'll throw you off kilter a little bit. You may not be ready for success. You always say you're being cute. I'm not being cute, I'm telling you the truth. You may not be ready for the success you envision happening to you. Imagine people saying dreaming of having a company of a thousand, someday we're, we're gonna have a company of a thousand employees, but yet you can't get yourself out of bed, the one employee. You're not ready for a thousand employees. Or let's say you, you sell and install air conditioning systems and you, oh, I envision a huge company and you get a thousand orders in one day. What would you do? You couldn't do it. You could not handle or occupy or capture the moment of success you dream about. God has to train us and raise us up with the capacity to capture the success and the destiny, the occupation he has for us in our future. Unfortunately, that's not culturally relevant or, or actually popular. We don't want to pay the price to prepare ourselves for success. We'd rather play the lottery. We want to come and just believe that God's going to do it in the mailbox. But if you will submit to God, let me say you'll have success. But you may not be ready. In fact, in Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 22, the Lord told the Israelites that as they drove the nations out, he would not do it all at once, only little by little, unless 
the wild animals became too numerous for them. They were not able to occupy, occupy the land. And many of you will find yourself, and I do too, we all have to thank God that he leads us little by little. And we, as we take territory and grow under his uh, training and mentorship, we, we become more valuable in the kingdom and more territory. In fact, in 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 22, Paul told Timothy not to lay hands on people suddenly or to place people in leadership quickly without a lot of forethought. In 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse number 8, I want to read a scripture to you here that you're familiar with. In 1 Timothy, Timothy 3, 8, deacons likewise are to be men worthy of respect. Unfortunately, in our culture, everyone demands respect. The problem with our technical culture is anyone can develop a website that looks like they are the most amazing, the most amazing person. I mean, in our technical culture, anyone can learn Photoshop, take an image, and broadcast themselves as the expert when they haven't passed first grade. They haven't passed go. Now I actually have some tools that I can actually apply to my finances. Getting over your past, moving on, and you can do all things in Christ. The way that God wants to partner with us, I, I just never thought about it like that. I feel like I just got empowered with truth. It's really given me a lot of confidence to go back down and really pursue it, really get this thing started. <laughs> More from this year's conference in a moment. Today's resources from Fixing the Money Thing come from the recent Pro Vision Conference. For just $35, five CDs or five DVDs designed to change your vision, train you to recognize opportunities, and get you dreaming again. We're called to have overflow. The overflow never happens until your heart overflows for God, never. Your heart, you gotta sell out to God. Gary Cassie, helping people fix their money thing for over 27 years. Dave Anderson, author, international business sales and leadership trainer and consultant. Rick Suarez, finance and marketing expert, along with other successful businessmen and women, share inspired information to help you fulfill your God-given potential. Call 888-391-LIFE, write, or go to GaryCassie.com to order. And whether you choose CDs or DVDs, we'll include the ProVision Journal, a place to record your thoughts, ideas, and life-altering revelations as you see God's creative power for your life. For most people, the reason they want to prosper is they're tired of running under the earth curse system. ProVision 2012, five CDs, five DVDs, and the ProVision Journal for $35 today in support of Faith Life Ministries. Write, call, or visit GaryCassie.com and start restoring provision in your business and your life. Gary Cassie is America's financial coach, and he wants to give you financial strategies you must have now. Call 888-391-LIFE. That's 888-391-5433. Write Faith Life Now or go to GaryCassie.com to get provision 2012 today. Once again, Gary and Drenda Cassie. I don't know about you, Gary, but I thought this year's Provision Conference was the yes. very best one yes. we've ever had. Yes. We do it annually, but this year there was just something different. And the message, the way it went, uh, you just got to get it. It's excellent. It's going to really be life changing for you. Yes. And uh, let's just go back to some more of the Provision Conference right All now, right. and we'll talk more about it later. Let's return to Faith Life Church and more from this year's Provision Conference on Fixing the Money Thing. But in the dream phase, there's always a crossroads where God births the dream and you have to make that first step. It's a crossroads. My day came after attending four years of Oral Roberts University. No jobs there in Tulsa. Amazingly, I received a phone call from my father who owned the pizza shops that I managed before I went to school. He said, Gary, the manager has resigned. Would you like your old job back? I was lonely, lived in an apartment with two other guys. That's not fun. I was making $5 now, we're going nowhere. There was nothing there in Tulsa. I was done with school. Why would I stay in Tulsa? 
oh, that was a hard day. I said, Dad, let me call you back. I prayed about it. I thought about it. I can't go back to what I left. I left that. I remember calling my dad with tears. I'm literally weeping. I said, Dad, I want to come home so bad. I don't know what to do out here. I don't see anything to do. There's nothing here. I don't know what, I don't know what to do. I just know I can't come home. And I wanted to go home so bad. I was homesick. I said, I can't come home. I mean, I was weeping. He said, I, I understand, son. Well, this friend that I had named Drenda, after that decision was made, God spoke to me. That's your wife. See, I passed the dream test. I took the step. I said yes to God. I have no clue where we're going, God, but I say yes. And he met me there. All right, here's your help meeting. Here's the one I've called you to help you get there. She's going to help you. Together as a team, you're going to discover this journey together. It's painful to step out in a dream when it's just fuzziness and nothingness. But you've got to pass the dream test. Next, God must train you in what I call the loyalty test. He's got to teach you, can you be trusted in your assignment? Genesis chapter 39, again, we're talking about Joseph. Genesis chapter 39 and verse number nine. You remember the story. Potiphar's wife pursued Joseph. He refused. Verse number, let's start at verse number seven. Or in the middle of verse number six. Now Joseph was well built and handsome. And after a while, his master's wife took notice of Joseph and said, come to bed with me. But he refused. He said, with me in charge, he told her, my master does not concern himself with anything in the house. Everything he owns, he has entrusted. Say that word entrusted. That's a trust. He has entrusted. He has what? He has entrusted, entrusted, entrusted to me. No one is greater in this house than I am. My master has withheld nothing from me except you because you're his wife. How then could I do such a wicked thing and sin against God? It's amazing, folks. This, this, is, this is a big deal in our culture, especially right now. I work at McDonald's. Who cares about that? I'm not on my destiny. I'm not any place special. I'm just making a few bucks part-time to pay my way through college, right? I'm just making, who cares if I'm on time? I hate this job anyway. I mean, if you'd see my job, you know it's a job from hell. I hate it and you hate it and we'd all hate it. Interesting that Joseph's perception was that if he was not faithful in what had been entrusted to him, he would be sinning against God. It is God who promotes. It is God who recognizes and sets people in place. It's God that does that. But in our culture, everyone wants to be a rock star. No one wants to play the drums. No one wants to set the band up. Everyone wants to be the rock star. No one wants to serve. There's a lack of respect and honor in our country. God sees your heart in everything you do. You see, if God knows you'll handle a trust to someone in the earth realm, he can risk you'll handle a trust in the spiritual realm. Here's something else you need to realize. God's word is only as good as your word. In other words, if your word means nothing to you, then your perception of someone's word is tainted and that it can be changed and you'll view God's word the same. It's untrustworthy, just like you view yourself. You must train yourself to be honorable and trusted with your words. You must train your children to honor their words. So let me ask you, are you loyal? Are you passing the loyalty test? Here's another test you must pass, the money test. 
Luke chapter 16, verse 10, whoever can be trusted with very little can be trusted with much. Who's ever dishonest with very little can also, or will also, will also, will also, will also be dishonest with much. Again, I'll tell you, there's no small assignments. Isn't this exciting? Pastor, why don't you teach something exciting tonight? Because I want you to win, that's why. I want to see you win. We had come out of financial dysfunction severely. And we had managed to save $21,000 and we were going to buy our car. We dreamt about a brand new Saturn. They had just come out, you know. And so we were going to go down to buy this Saturn. And the Lord spoke to me and said, "Uh, excuse me, do you remember the $20,000 you owe your parents when they bailed you out consistently over the last few years? Yeah, that's just my parents. That's just my parents, God. They They got more than enough. So I want you to pay it back. Now, you are kidding, right? I mean, our cars barely run. I mean, we are barely scraping by. We have $21,000. Who knows how much they have? Look at the car. They have nice cars. We have nothing. And you're trying to tell me to pay him back the $20,000 and live live in this broken down van again forever, whoever, whatever? (laughs) He says, yes. Hmm. That's not a good story. Wait a minute. I think about that. My... The Lord told me this. He says, unless you pay your dad back. Well, let me tell you what my dad did earlier. So I went to my dad. We are a conniving bunch at times, aren't we? I told dad my problem, knowing he has a great heart. He's a, he's, my dad's a generous person. He goes, you know what? I'll just take that $20,000 out of the inheritance. I'll write it in the will that when I die, they'll take $20,000, you know, out of the inheritance, out of your inheritance. And then, you know, it's paid for. Yes. I thought, that's awesome, dad. Thank you. And then the Lord said, no, that's not how I instruct you to handle this. <laughs> no, you're going to pay him back with cash because if you did do it that way, every time he saw that car drive by, he's going to think, there goes my 20000 He'll never see me. He'll never see my glory. He'll never see my faithfulness in your life. Okay. That was a hard day. We, we called my dad up. We went by his house. When I called him on the phone, his first words were, how much do you need this time? No, dad, I'm, I'm just, I'm really coming by, I'm gonna pay you back. Pay me back? Yeah, I'll be by in a minute. So we drive there, dad, I'm here to pay you back. He said, well, that's $20,000. I, I said, no, just give me the exact amount, I'll pay you back. Got my checkbook out and he stopped and he thought about it. My dad's a great guy. He said, you know, part of that was a gift. Just make it 10. The Saturn cost 11000 I had just, you would not believe how happy we said, 11, you'll take 10. Okay, here's 10. Zoom, we took off for the Saturn dealership. We'll take that one and here's the cash. Today's resources from Fixing the Money Thing come from the recent Pro Vision Conference. For just $35, five CDs or five DVDs designed to change your vision train you to recognize opportunities and get you dreaming again. We're called to have overflow. Overflow never happens until your heart overflows for God, never. Your heart, you gotta sell out to God. Gary Cassie, helping people fix their money thing for over 27 years. Dave Anderson, author, international business sales and leadership trainer and consultant. Rick Suarez, finance and marketing expert, along with other successful businessmen and women, share inspired information to help you fulfill your God-given potential. Call 888-391-LIFE, write, or go to garycassie.com to order. And whether you choose CDs or DVDs, we'll include the ProVision Journal, a place to record your thoughts, ideas, and life-altering revelations as you seek God's creative power for your life. For most people, the reason they want to prosper is they're tired of running under the earth curse system. ProVision 2012, five CDs, five DVDs, and the ProVision Journal for $35 today in support of Faith Life Ministries. Write, call, or visit GaryCassie.com and start restoring provision in your business and your life. Gary Cassie is America's financial coach, and he wants to give you financial strategies you must have now. Call 888-391-LIFE. That's 888-391-5433. 
Write Faith Life Now or go to GaryCasey.com to get Provision 2012 today. Once again, Gary and Drenda Casey. We have to become faithful in our finances. And these tests that Gary's talking about, mm -hmm. this is what we've seen through the years. Many people are held back because they don't pass these tests, right, Gary? That's exactly right. And we can pray all we want to, we can beg, you know, but really prosperity flows out of the, the laws of being faithful, integrity, God's concepts, righteousness. And in the provision conference this year, the Holy Spirit just orchestrated mm -hmm. details of what we need to be aware of. And I know it's going to bless you. I know yes. it, it had such an impact on me. Yes. And the whole, the whole crowd was just impacted by the Holy Spirit as we realized the steps that God was laying out for us that we needed to embrace to have all that God said we should have. Yes, and Dave Anderson was fantastic as well. A lot of great speakers excellent, here, excellent. excellent material. You definitely want to get it. And you want to go to our website at faithlifenow.com or call the number at the bottom of your screen and get the Provision Conference plus the Provision Journal. That's for all the great ideas God's going to give you. You can yes. journal them and keep track of them. And uh, know this, you have a partner right here. We're going to cheer you on and believe God for the very, very best and that you win the money thing in your life and your story will be told to all those that know you and you'll have a chance to tell them how you prosper. We look forward to seeing you next time here at Fixing the Money Thing. Fixing the Money Thing is brought to you by the Ford Financial Group and Lindsay Honda and Acura of Columbus. When you need God's help, prayer is always the answer. Pastor Gary understands and wants to help. That's why he has caring friends standing by, ready to pray with you. No matter what you're facing, there is hope. Call and let's agree together. It's time to build an army and we're calling all women to come together for this monumental free event, featuring a powerful lineup of speakers and plenty of shopping and fun for girlfriends of all ages. This is one conference you can't afford to miss, so we made it affordable, free of charge. Call all your girlfriends and mark your calendar for October 18, 19, and 20. This year, so get this women's conference through morning, afternoon, and evening workshops. Call and invite someone today. Tune in each Friday at 5.30 p.m. for Drenda. Connect with special guests, discover life-changing topics, and learn to live life out loud. It's more than just television. It's Drenda. Come experience Faith Life Church for yourself and become part of a close-knit gathering of people who want something more, more impact, more purpose, more of God, more of life. Located on the east side of Columbus, just 10 minutes from Easton off of 161, Faith Life Church meets in the Now Center with services Saturdays at 6 p.m. and Sundays at 9.30 and 11.30 a.m. Come experience the good life at Faith Life Church. Want to know more? Read and comment on Gary's blog. Partner with Faith Life Now. Send us your prayer requests. Order more life-changing resources. All these things and more are waiting for you at GaryCasey.com. Thank you for your faithful prayers and generous support of this worldwide ministry. Fixing the Money Thing is a presentation of Faith Life Now.